Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. You know, I've been using FlexTime a lot lately for editing recorded audio. And if you're someone that uses FlexTime for quantizing, making manual flex edits, at a certain point, you possibly want to hear the before and after results of all your effort. So obviously, you would go to the Enable Bypass button right in the track header for that track and turn Flex off, take a listen, turn it back on, take another listen. But sometimes when you turn Flex off and back on for a track, certain markers that you've erased intentionally because they weren't serving the track suddenly reemerge. And this can just make a mess of things. I mean, how many markers down the line that you intentionally got rid of are suddenly back? Well, what I want to show you today is a much more effective way of A being the results of all your flex edits. So let's dig into it. On screen, I have a multi-mic drum recording that I intend to quantize for sure, maybe make some manual flex edits. Because all of these tracks were recorded at the exact same time of the exact same instrument, I made sure to group these tracks together. If I open the mixer, you can see that the group field has been set for group one for all of these channel strips of the drums. And you can see in the group section here, inside the inspector, I made sure to enable both editing selection and quantize locked audio under the settings. This way, any edit that I make across my drums will be applied to all the other tracks in the group. This is incredibly important for multi-mic signals. All right, so I'll undo, zoom out, and we're gonna take a listen to this section right here. Right between bars 215 and 216, I'll start it maybe back here. We're gonna take a listen to the raw drum tracks and we're gonna listen to this fill before I do any sort of quantizing. Here we go. So right out of the gate, let's, let's just quantize. I want to invest the least amount of time possible correcting the timing of these drums. If you take a look, you know, the drums are pretty close to their intended locations, but they're not quite there. They're not exactly on any bar or beat. That's all right. Our drummer is a human being. He's allowed to be a human and have slight variations in his performance. But I'd still like to make sure my drums are tight with the grid. So let's go right to the region inspector with the drum region selected. Go to quantize and let's set these regions to an eighth note value. All right, Logic has flexed these drum transients to an eighth note value along the tempo and grid and it's locked everything on a bar by bar, beat per beat basis. And the quantizing is determined by these Q reference tracks within the group. So I've indicated to Logic, hey, Logic, I want you to take into consideration the kick drum, the snare top track, and the two toms for where transients should be placed when I quantize. So if we take a listen again now to this fill, let's see what happens. Okay, uh, th that didn't sound quite right. Let's take a listen again. You hear that sort of staggered effect right there of the snare drum? Some of these transients have been pulled a little too far from one another when I quantized. Obviously, this is not ideal. We're trying to achieve natural quantizing and editing. So I'm just gonna pull up my eraser tool and get rid of these markers that were created. Let's take a listen again now to this fill. Okay, sounds a lot better. Let's get some context though. Let's go back a couple bars and take a listen. I even feel like something there's going on. But at this point, I'm happy with the fill. Everything else is locked in. Cool. From here, let's say, okay, I've quantized the entire performance. And maybe I've even made some manual flex edits as well. Now I want to hear the before and after results of these corrections. Are these making a positive impact or am I taking away from my drummer's performance? Of course, you would think, all right, let's go right to the enable button right here for flex. And let's turn this off for our group. Okay, so let's now take a listen to before we did any quantizing. All right, sounds pretty good. Let's turn this back on. And just know, something happened here. These markers that I erased, I got rid of, are back. If we hear it. Okay, so now what the heck? Where do you go from here? Because just think about it. Let's say we've gone around erasing various markers in these quantized groups 
you know, right here, or further down the line, before and after, and then you turn flex off and turn it back on, and they just come right back on. This is infuriating. This is not cool. Well, what I'm going to recommend to you is instead of turning flex off and on for your track, what I recommend is that you use track alternatives. If you're not familiar with track alternatives, man, do I have videos for you. I'll include some links in the description below. But track alternatives, in a nutshell, allow you to keep different versions of a track, of a performance, of a region on the same track lane. And you can create a new track alternative or duplicate a track alternative just by clicking on these two arrows next to your track's name. If you don't see this, of course, you could right click in a track header, just in an empty section, not on a button at all, and go down to track header components and you can reveal or hide track alternatives. So you see those arrows disappeared or you can hold option and press T to bring up this menu. And I'll bring track alternatives back to my track headers. If you click on these two arrows, you see options to create a new track alternative. Or if I undo, duplicate a track alternative. Right, so if I click on this arrow again, I can show the inactive track alternatives for the snare bottom track. All right, so we see snare bottom and we see track alternative A. And I can preview this track alternative. I can move this to be the dominant track on this track lane. You have the option to switch between these track alternatives very easily. I'm just gonna hide the inactive. Now take note, in this drum group here, if I squash things up, only the snare bottom track has a new track alternative. It's been named B and we can flip between the two. We have A and B. But the other drum tracks in this group have not created a new track alternative. This is gonna be a problem. So I'm going to undo a few steps here. And next I wanna go back to my group and make sure to enable track alternatives in the settings here. And now we'll click and duplicate. All right, now every track in this group has a duplicate track alternative. And of course you can use track alternatives for A being even tracks that aren't part of a group. But I wanna make sure to show you how this might work with a group of tracks and not just a single track that you're flex editing. So if I flip between track alternative B to A, they look identical. But now if we select the regions in group A and go to the region inspector, we can turn quantize off and you can turn flex and follow off. All right, so this is the OG, the original performance. No flex editing, no quantizing. In fact, I'm going to double click on A and call this original. Now, if we flip to B, now we have our flex edited regions and we'll call these quantized, right? Because you can turn flex on and off on a per track basis but flex and follow is based on a per region basis. You could just set a single region to have flex turned on. While for other regions on the same track lane, you don't have to have flex and follow on. So I'm gonna undo. And now we're gonna take a look at the quantized version. We're gonna get rid of these freaking markers here that keep coming back. And let's now play a sample. All right, what does the original sound like? And the quantized version. Heck yes, man, this is what we want. No more markers just popping in and out of the picture. The markers that I've erased are gone and they'll stay gone. And this is exactly what we want. So now I can go through, I can make my edits. I can say, hey, you get out of here. You move. And we always have that original version in the background. Let's do the same for a track that is not part of a group. So I'll select this bass guitar track and we'll do the same thing. So we have our bass, take a listen. All right, let's quantize. And I've decided, no nah, man, I don't want these. And of course we can click on these double arrows to duplicate. The B version will be our quantized version while the A version, I'm gonna select the region, is going to be our original version.
beautiful. Let's make some kind of ridiculous edits so you can be really sure this is happening. Go back. And that's how you effectively A-B your flex edits in Logic Pro without markers suddenly reappearing every time you turn flex off and back on. All right, so I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, you know, please subscribe to Why Logic Pro Rules, the channel. Take a look in the links below in the description. I always have links to templates, PDFs, guides, all sorts of things that are designed to help you in your journey in Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll check you next week. Take care.